Pastor Mohan, we so love you and appreciate you for all these years and uh, grateful for you and your ministry. And, uh, you know, I know you're a man who follows the Holy Spirit, and I believe the Holy Spirit has been leading this service. And so I want you to just come now and, and you minister. And, uh, and then after you minister, I'll come back. All right. Let's give a big, big hand for Pastor Mohan ba Babu Yalati from Hyderabad, India, a friend of this fellowship for going on 25 years, 23 or so years. God bless you. Amen. Well, well, you may be seated, please. Thank you so much for this wonderful time. I could really sense uh, the tremendous presence of God and uh, the Lord has been visiting us. The, whole, the presence of the Holy Spirit God is so evident this morning as well as now. I thank God for this opportunity the Lord has given to me to minister to you guys. And uh, God can send anybody, an Indian, to speak uh, to Corpus Christi. <laughs> With a strong Indian accent, you need to be so attentive, otherwise you miss the best from the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Don and Sister Marwa, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share the word to these wonderful people. I was telling that, you know, you got a wonderful man of God, wonderful woman of God, who can share the word of God in the best way possible, the Christ-centered message. Our people, our pastors always love to hear Pastor Don. Whenever he comes, he make a big difference in Zion Fellowship. And uh, Brother Stan comes and uh, always been a blessing to us. And thank you so much. And uh, I was actually, last night I came from uh, India. Uh, you know, I was in London struggling to get my ticket to Dallas, came down to Dallas, and from one end to another end I was walking because I hurt my leg, I broke my little finger of left leg, so I can't walk that the way I normally supposed to walk, but uh, I want to see my wife. What is the motivation for me to see my wife, you know, who is in States? Uh, so, here is my beloved wife in whom I am well pleased. So I'll, before I preach, uh, I request her to come and share a few words of greeting, then I can uh, start preaching. Hallelujah. We enjoyed great power and presence of God. Beautiful. We enjoyed. Just we soaked in the presence right now. Right now in the worship, we are so blessed to see you all. I love you and I love and wishes from our church and the family, Zion Fellowship uh, Ministries, and also all the saints from our place. We love you all. You are in right place. You are in the kingdom. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rani. So that's how uh, the whole thing started for me. So when people asked, uh, the ticket is so high, Pastor, how can you go to U.S.? Uh, because, this, because of this corona, you all have seen what uh, devastation it has caused into the lives of the people. So I said, because my wife is there, for me, the money is like a paper now. <laughs> so I have no choice, but whatever... Uh, you know, you can put it on the check, I pay and go and see my wife, you know. So, that's what I could able to come. And, uh, yeah, I mean, even in Corona times, we had a devastation, like, you know, people were dying on the roads because they couldn't get even oxygen, you know, that was the problem. And uh, what happened, we were in lockdown, me and my wife were together because all my three kids got married and they have their own families. So I have five grandchildren. Uh, you all know that. Some of you know at least. So one day I went to see one of the ministers in the government talking to, I was responding what he said. Uh, 
Suddenly he asked me, Sir, are you married? I looked at him. What do you mean by that? <laughs> then I said, you know, I'm married 38 years, 39th now going on. Oh, so I have five grandchildren, but we look young for only one reason. We die for Jesus. <laughs> That's the only reason we look young, but otherwise our age is not, uh, you know, it's going on, like, you know. But I was looking at Pastor Don and Sister Mava. They were growing young, actually. Why is the reason uh, it's other way around for you? Only one thing, Pastor Don, if, because you had this white beard, that is making you the age. Otherwise, it's totally different, like, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, I was praying and asking the Lord. Actually, let me tell, finish this story first, you know. So we were locked in the house. So we had a deal. Now, only two people. She cooks. Uh, then we have only though no maid, no servant, nothing. Only we two people have to work on our way. So she said, I will cook. You wash the dishes. So that's a good deal. Especially for an Indian, it's very difficult to wash dishes, you know, utensils. I don't know about America. Here, what happens, I don't know. But in India, it's very normal people, men, they don't do that, actually. So. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, what... Uh, I said, I'll wash the dishes, you cook. So normally, I just one night, uh, I was just uh, started washing. Then I realized we are not paying the proper salary to the maid servant. <laughs> because they're so tough, so difficult. And I started, she, she slept off, started at 8 o'clock, going on and on and on and on up to 12 o'clock. Only one guy is struggling, Lord, where am I now? What is happening to me? A senior pastor, chairman, science fellowship, ended up washing dishes, like, you know. <laughs> and then I said, uh, uh, then the biryani dish came. It's very tough. You know, in Hyderabad, the biryani is very tough. Complicated dish. It was not going. I worked out on the dish for almost 20 minutes. Washing and washing and washing. It's not going. Then finally I said, okay, it's okay, then let me finish it off. Then the milk dish came to me. The milk utensil, it was even taking some more time. Then I thought my wife is so good. She never complained all these days and all. How much uh, they work in the house. Why don't we give a big round of applause to women actually. They're so blessed, so wonderful. You know, they do all the work, but they don't complain. They don't make uh, uh, their presence felt. And such a wonderful, God has given us a paracletus. You know, the word paracletus, Hebrew word says, it's a military term. They are, they are ferocious, I mean, when it comes to the devil. <laughs> Not with the husbands, but with the devil. <laughs> so they are good. I really appreciate That's why I thought, let me make it. Then I realized one more thing. I was praying last night, you know, Lord, for three years, because of corona, we could not make it. What do we do now? Then uh, uh, my accent is gone. You know, I cannot speak the way uh, in the past, like I was not climatized to this situation. Especially coming to Texas and preaching to Texans is a very difficult thing. Then I said, okay, the Lord said, you make sounds, I make sense, he said, you know. You make sounds, I make sense. Because when he ministers to us, it makes a big difference in our lives, beloved. And that's what I felt, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, when I was coming to U.S. in the beginning of the days, uh, people said, you know, if you want to flow with this uh, nation, the culture, pastor, you need to learn a few words, actually. I said, what are those words? Uh, he said, you know, you are there, like, you know, uh, over the top. Over the top, like, you know, it's good. If you say it's good, this morning service was over the top, like, you know. <laughs> And uh, now the worship was over the top. James blesses. And the atmosphere was over the top. Then I said, that's a good word. And then let's roll. Then we let's start. 
then finally they said one more word you need to learn pastor what is that you know if somebody asks you what are you doing you should just say i am chilling <laughs> then i said okay let me try try that let me try that when we were in san antonio i was with natli natli said you know pastor don nat so natli said what are you doing pastor what are you doing mohan i just i am chilling she looked at me laughing and you know, oh are you chilling i said yeah because somebody told me uh, that you know this is the word you need to normally use this word i said okay then i said okay uh then i realized one thing i want to make a phrase out of it if you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior you can chill in christ for a lifetime <laughs> for a lifetime i know you don't need to worry about anything just chill in christ that is a phrase for corpus christi <laughs> well this morning i was sharing uh, uh, you know about uh, restoration of all things you know because god has a heart for restoring what we have lost in our lives in the garden of eden when adam lost this guy was walking with god in the cool of the day having fellowship with the lord but somehow he made a different choice because god always a given a free will as a wonderful gift to the mankind you know and the salvation also you know the two important things today you came to this place on your own choice you wanted to listen to an indian speaker what a wonderful thing you know <laughs> so that's wonderful you know you made you made it i know and today god wants to speak to you and for some of you it could be a rema word it can be you know life changing word touching and transforming our lives so garden of eden you know is the presence of god it's an environment it's not about all the trees and flowers and all that it's an environment god has created for adam to live and enjoy his presence so he lost his you know the the relationship because of uh, his disobedience we all know that story but i want to connect that to the till the last of my message so he lost his relationship because god wanted him to reflect him to the world outside he lost that opportunity he lost the most important thing is to rule on his behalf he lost domain he lost his dominion over the earth so god want to restore that that's why if you look at revelation chapter 13 was 8 it is said you know the the lamb that slain bef- even before the foundations of the world god has a plan for you <coughs> even before adam has fallen he has a plan as a redemption plan a restoration plan f- for the mankind beloved now what does it mean to you and me now even before you have a problem god has already planned for a solution god has only already got an answer even before you know your problem that is the application of the word of god into our lives this morning you must be going through some problem which you feel can i find an answer but god says already i got an answer for that i got an answer for that I know what is going to happen. So that's why I want to encourage you this morning beloved. The restoration of all things. All things not few things because God is capable of doing everything it can be restored through God by God beloved. And uh, you know when I was uh, sharing uh, when Pastor Don came to Bangalore we really touched by his uh, you know the generosity love and affection along with sister mawa love can be spoken but love has to be practiced and when they came there it was such a pleasant surprise to me for one day one day just they came they flew all the way be there it speaks a lot beloved i was so personally blessed thank you pastor don for being there sister mawa 
because when god says something he means it we should be a people who say something we should mean that one and uh, it is a message to the ministry sign fellowship that you know pastor don is for sign fellowship you know he loves the fellowship he loves me my family and he stands with me in any eventuality that is what we 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 take we took it pastor and you know god has a plan and a purpose for all of us when the relationship was broken he sent his son jesus christ the seed of woman he said i will send him in fact i'll come back god said i'll come back as a man and i will go to the cross so that i can reconcile you through my blood and to my body which is broken for you when i was meditating this word i just felt his broken body is going to mend our broken relationships when you have a broken relationship you need to remember that already somebody has has broken his body for you and me so that our relationships can be mended through his broken body hallelujah and also another thing beloved i just felt this morning when i was sharing you know the corona experience has devastated us totally but one thing i like about the spirit of corona you may say what because you know those these are the days where you are so scared of another human being somebody coughs you are in trouble somebody sneezes you are in trouble somebody takes out you are in trouble everything why it has happened the corona is the tiny smallest thing you rejected it you hated it you avoided it but it sneaked into your life never say die spirit i wish every christian should have the spirit of corona that never say die spirit go into the whole world and infect the one with the message of jesus christ people may put you down people may hate you people may reject you but you go there and get the thing done beloved that's what i realized you know what is the good thing you can learn out of this dreadful disease that the spirit is that it never gave up till it is it is wants to come back to us so that's where i think uh, god has a plan and a purpose in our lives midst of all these things what is happening and also another thing i want to share this morning is uh, you know your sonship god has restored our sonship you know when we lost that in the garden of eden god sent forth his son in galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says you know by faith we are his sons and 4 4 to 7 says he sent his son at the right time at the fulfillment of all the time and then through him we are adopted as sons so that is our identity once you know your identity you are a different person altogether you are totally a different person and if you don't realize your identity then you struggle with things beloved that's what happens when god encountered moses moses said who am i who am i because he he almost lost everything for 40 years he was raised in the house of pharaoh for 40 years he was in the forest of midian and then when he was encountered by god he said who am i because if you look at the his life for 40 years god did not speak to him even a single word did not speak to him but god was working in his life beloved so when you feel that god is not speaking to you but let me assure you but still god is at work in your life god is at work in your life god was preparing him in that desert in that wilderness when we are going through our issues 
no hope situation moses thought it is end for his life he might die in that desert of midian but god said i will restore you back to your leadership i will restore you as a redeemer for the children of israelites i'll make your name known into the history this guy was all alone one day he was enc- encountered by god you know what god told moses if you want to get back to your original place you need to shun your past drop your past when he was asking what is the what is the you know uh, what is that you are holding in your hand moses said a rod drop it the rod speaks about his past he speaks about his limitations then god said when when it when it when when he dropped it you know what it became a snake and moses was so dreadful he was running away from it this man you know he was in the wilder he might have seen so many snakes he might have killed so many snakes but specially this snake made him to get scared but god said hold it by its tail not by its mouth because the mouth belongs to me because one day on the cross of calvary i am going to trample that head and you take this tail that's easy for you i take the head of the devil because it belongs to me i need to trample it because your past is always like a snake hissing at you you are a failure you are nobody you are you have not done anything you are supposed to do the better things but you have not done it well so that always comes back to you but god says drop it because i want to give you a new future i will restore back all that what you have lost in that wilderness make you something different i am going to use you moses was never the same person beloved this morning for some of you god is going to restore back what is your calling on your life beloved the restoration of your calling god is going to do and let me tell you one more thing you know when you look at uh, the life of abraham god was testing abraham he was testing him for one reason you know god promised abraham isaac god said look at the stars look at the sand god always makes it very clear to us he speaks as he wants us to see something before it happens every night uh, god has reminded abraham about his promise every morning when he was walking god was reminding him about his promise every morning every night but finally the day has come that uh, i want your son to be offered as a burnt offering the only son now abraham has come to a place now and he has every reason to talk to god in polite in a polite way lord you have given me this son you made the promise and you said through this seed i am going to make it big that is the promise and most of the christians do that with the lord now we reason with god because you said that this is going to happen but god sometimes goes beyond our reason he see i was asking abraham give that promise i have given you the best can you give me the best this morning god is asking us beloved i have given you the best can you give the best to me can you give the best what is best in your life can you offer that to me when pastor don preaches about christ centered message what is that the best what god has got he has given to us the best what jesus has got he has given to us jesus always makes it very clear to us i am the way 
if he says i am a way he would have been the most popular person he said i am the way there is no other way that's why he makes everybody you know feel bad about it he is the only way there is no other way i am the truth there is no other truth you might be searching for truth but i am the truth and you are searching for life there is you don't find life in anywhere except in me because i am the life i am the life it not it's not in your mind it's not you in your relations or anywhere but it's with me so when god was asking abraham give your son abraham obeyed it he was going through two three days went to mount moriah just you know the story i don't want to take much time my time is running out so he was actually offered there isaac asked where is the lamb the lord will provide he tied him isaac was not a young man not just uh, not uh, like a 10 year old 15 year he is a young man maybe somebody was telling him was around 30 he would have pushed his father and he would have run away he would have because he was strong actually that time around 30 but he obeyed his father we never think about that thing you know what was this thing of isaac he was strong enough to run away but he obeyed his father he was tied he was he was meant to offer a burnt offering so if he kills him puts fire on his uh, sacrifice he will be reduced to ashes that is the fate of isaac but abraham knew one thing in hebrews chapter 11 verse 29 if i am right i think 9 29 or 19 i think if i am right 19 you know what he says god is able to raise my dead son who is reduced to ashes beloved today this is the word for some of you your hopes have gone into ashes there is no hope situation you said it is almost done but abraham said my god can restore back to restore back my son to me even from ashes what a faith that's why abraham is called father of faith beloved yes, that's why he said you know even what you what, what does ashes mean it's gone it's done but you, our god you are god my god is able beloved today if you have such situation if you have such situation let me tell you this is going to happen to us god is capable of restoring back all that what we have lost because joel 225 says the years the locusts have eaten i will restore back what you have lost he is going to restore back that is a promise of god and this morning i was speaking about uh, job i was speaking about the life of job i'll just give us some glimpse of it you know job was a righteous man he has not done any mistake if you look at the bible the children of israelites for them enemy was not a big problem their disobedience is their big problem whenever they are with god they were on the winning side whenever they were against god they were losing side enemy was never an issue for them any given time so the lord said because of your disobedience you lost everything but here job story is totally different he was a righteous man he shuns evil and he worships the lord he loves the lord the lord delights in him the lord was speaking to satan when satan went to you know to see god god almighty said have you seen my servant considered my servant job who loves me more than anything this morning i want that we should take this word beloved can god say that word about you and me here is my servant he loves me more than anything in this world anything in this world can you face a situation where you can say that lord you are greater than me greater to me than anything lord 
when paul was pre- imprisoned you know what happened you, this was this is history when paul was imprisoned he was put under the uh, under the ground 30 feet under the ground in a dungeon only one small opening every day morning give some food to him close it and he has no washroom no comfort the greatest uh, apostle we can ever see was in the dungeon in the darkness in his last days but god gave him a hope that's why god has shown him the heaven even before something happened to him he said i will restore you back to heaven paul this is a temporary season in your life it's not going to be permanent the enemy wanted to break the will of paul but paul said i have already seen the best in my life i'm going there so no problem it is only a temporary phase to you and me because the final restoration is heaven to all of us the final thing where we have to go there so paul was really uh, has gone through this situation beloved and when it comes to job again let me tell you job has first first time when god spoke to you know satan job was lost his children his property it's okay sometimes you know property is gone no problem but children it's a very big deal and then comes his own health for 9 months it was a big deal for him his wife said curse god and die but he said no i cannot do that i cannot do that because god was challenging the devil this is my servant he loves me can god challenge the devil about you and me beloved that here is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and then job said one thing my redeemer liveth my redeemer liveth this is the word beloved in, in despite of all those things what we go through end of the day my redeemer liveth we had one thing when my son prince had a, a problem with his stomach we took him to hospital many places we went doctors you know nobody could able to find anything but we are so you know we were really disturbed on that because when it happens to your children you disturb you know you 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 can say many things to many people it comes to your children you are the most vulnerable people you know you always say that what do i do now so that's the problem then the lord gave me this word my redeemer liveth then i said okay no issues when we went there doctor said you know i we don't know what is happening we prayed that day the doctor said your son has no problem take him to your home hallelujah because god can restore back all those things beloved to us and also i want to share a few things before my time is running out i don't want to take much time because indians always love speaking a long messages you know but you know time is running out and i just want to share you god can restore anything which we have lost beloved not only he restores he adds something to that that makes me so happy then i realize when god can restore what is lost to you in a double ma- double portion better you lose something better you lose something suppose you know my wife uh, rani she lost her bangle in dubai when we were coming when we were i mean some I mean, on my on our way she lost then she uh, security she lost uh, then i was I, we were really not happy about that but i realized suppose the people came to us your wife lost a bangle but we want to bless her with one more bangle you know if she they say that way she doesn't mind losing any number of bangles sir. because you know every time she loses a bangle she gets one more extra one more extra any time you lose something you get something extra beloved the double portion is promised for us so whatever is there whatever you lost it can be added to you beloved that is the promise of god for us hallelujah finally i i i want to share a few things and i want to close it you know 
when when peter was away from the lord god jesus wanted to bring him back he wants to bring him back he lost he said it's all over because he denied christ three times he said let me go to uh, fishing it was a good memory he has seen he has seen jesus doing all miracles raising lazarus dead you know all the miracles i just want to make it a small thing and then but jesus came down to restore him now this morning if somebody feels that you know i need to come back to god i need to come back to god not that you are not good you are good but the way god is expecting from you the intensity of your love the intensity of your priorities is god is number one to you if god is number one to you in every possible way one day my wife came to me and she said you are not number one in my life i was shocked <laughs> every husband will get shocked who could be your number one if i am not especially in the indian male it's very devastating very i how could you say that word but she quietly said jesus christ is number one in my life <laughs> then i said oh now now there is no competition for jesus christ how can i compete with him he came down from heaven he gave his life to her he gave her new life he is taking her to heaven everything good thing he has given not me then i want to come back i have a habit of coming back every time if somebody says something after some time i said rani can i make something can i say something to you then uh, i said even you are not number one in my life <laughs> <laughs> even you are not number 1 in my life for me jesus christ is number 1 hallelujah because <coughs> because he gave everything to me he restores everything in my life if i am healthy praise god if i am sick even praise god somebody said you know asking me suppose somebody gets a sickness what does it mean i said doesn't mean anything if see if sickness leaves you li you live if sickness don't leave you go to heaven simple thing very simple because our 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 understanding is if it leaves it's okay if it doesn't leave you leave to heaven what is the big deal in that that's what i mean that is the christian life that's what pastor don says you know the christ centered message you know everything has to be christ centered it's not a uh, human centered it's not problem centered it's not money centered it's not money christianity is not about money it's about love beloved it's love that's why i like pastor don's teaching he never speaks about money he only speaks about christ christ and christ that's all not more than that <laughs> only and we we love we love to see other things i was i i'm i'm running short of time but one this one i want to share one day i was in san diego and i was sitting with my friend and uh, there is one mighty woman of god she was preaching and uh, she was on fire actually and uh, she was i said uh, my friend jerry she is doing great job man let's hear her and finally she said there is one guy who is watching this television program god wants you to give 10000 dollars then i told jerry uh, this is for you <laughs> not for me and he said how could you say that this is for me then i said i don't have 10000 dollars god knows it very well that you know a guy who doesn't have 10000 how can he give this could be you then he said please switch off the te television you know why because she speaks jerry now he wants to close it down <laughs> it is not about all these things beloved it is a package when you follow jesus everything follows you my dad used to say my dad pastor john bob used to say if you follow jesus blessings and honor all the prosperity will follow you like a puppy 
you imagine the puppies don't go after puppy puppy has to follow you most of the christians they are following puppies now puppies are no good let them follow you so uh, that's why i said pastor don we are blessed by that word because it should be christ centered message it should be he should we should see his face not his hands we should see his face not his hands this morning before i close beloved god has come to restore our relationships god has come to re- restore our sonship god has come to restore you know the presence which we were missing because in his presence there is fullness of joy you know no matter what you need to be joyful whether it is good or bad it doesn't matter it's god that matters to us and god has come to restore our calling our priorities beloved this morning this is my word maybe it touches somebody and you know we need to be a god centered people christ centered people in our lives in our thinking and uh, we have a, a light up telangana initiative that is uh, 40000 churches in my state and uh, we are planning to have each church one soul one month that means 40000 people in one month in my state one year almost 5 lakhs 500000 and uh, 10 years 5 million so that is where we want to reach out the people with the christ centered message and we want pastor don to come and minister to some of our pastors that we can escalate and take it to another level reaching out the people and you are the church standing with him you are so blessed to have such a wonderful man of god as your father wonderful woman of god as your mother and this is the church where against all odds bringing this christ centered message to the world outside so you are so blessed and one more thing this is where we need to prioritize our life spill about so let's stand and let's pray about it for a while we'll close it father we come to your throne of grace my god lord let all things be restored to you as if you look at the life of job my god you restored his children you restored his pros- property you restored his health my god it's a promise lord god zermayah 3017 says lord god i will restore your health today there could be some people here in this place god's promise for you i will restore your health and heal your wounds says the lord receive this word because nothing is impossible to god but he is a creator he is the owner of everything father we release the healing virtue into the bodies of these dear ones who are going through the sickness lord we have seen so many miracles lord god you are a god of today you are a god of now my god we have seen we want to see now lord god let your healing virtue release being released right now in the name of jesus christ thank you lord for the life of peter lord god though he has given up but you have never given up on him lord god you are a god who will never give up on us my god you will be with us you will try to restore us to give us the priorities of our life on the day of pentecost lord god he stood boldly for what was he was struggling in the past he left that past behind him and he spoke the word boldly and he said we are the witnesses you have killed him that was the word lord god but god raised him and that is the power of resurrection lord lord let this mighty power be released into their lives my god and we we just pray lord god let your word being fruitful in their lives my god we give you glory and honor in jesus most precious name i pray amen amen, amen. thank you god bless you